Hey everyone, so we're back with another build following on from the, the last video, which is where I showed you how to put a project directly onto the headset. If some of you might have looked at the file size, you'll have realized that it's quite a large file that goes on there just for the base project. Uh, roughly, I think it's actually 200 and something, yeah, probably. So 228 megabytes for the file that would have built to the headset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some ways of reducing that size down and then just make it a little bit easier uh, through some optimization of the editor, uh, the background content and just the build settings that we go for. So the first thing we need to do actually is go to edit and then plugins. This is just a quality of life thing that we're going to do. We're going to actually disable Beam VR. And the idea behind this is to stop this from loading up when you don't have a headset plugged in. And if you develop into the Oculus Quest, you don't really need it anyway. So all you need to do is go to plugins. So it's edit, plugins at the bottom, and then you'll be greeted by this window here. So you scroll down to virtual reality, and then we're just going to scroll down to the bottom and hit Beam VR. So you see we've disabled this, and it's asking us to restart. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that for now. If you're not going to make any more changes, hit the restart and go for it. But I'm going to now jump into edit and project settings because some of the settings I'm going to change in here require a restart as well. So just going to go through and we're going to change what it is we need. So to begin with, I'm going to go to packaging. And in the first tab here, we've got some good stuff, which we don't really need to change. But we're going to hit this drop down arrow here to show advanced options. From this, we're going to go cook only maps. So we're, we're going to select the map in a minute and then we're going to do that. So you can see here it says cook everything the project content and directly. That means everything within this editor will be cooked to the project, which we don't need. So you can see it's disabled already, so we're going to ignore that. But following that information, we're going to exclude the editor content when cooking. So we're basically going to say if it's not being used in the editor, we don't need it. And that's the plan of enabling this one here. But then what we're going to do is, if we've got a list of maps, so you can see here the project has three maps in its settings, or in its folders. And if you build the project now, all three of them will be built to the headset. But you can only access the one, which is motion controller map. So we're actually going to go to list maps to include in a package build. So we're going to hit the plus, and then choose file from computer. And from here, you see it's opened up the project folders. So we're actually going to go to virtual reality blueprint because that's where this folder is. We're going to load that. We're going to go to map. And the one that we want is motion controller map. So we just select the motion controller.new map. This may be named something else if you have a custom map or a level built. But you just find it in your folder structure and then select that one. If you're using level streaming, I would recommend choosing all the maps included in that. I have I've tried it without just doing that with just choosing the the main level stream and it doesn't work so you do need to include all the maps which will be used in your project but apart from that this area is good to go so we're done here uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go scroll right down to the bottom and you can see oculus vr is the plugin so we're actually going to open this up and we're going to go to launch oculus performance window and we're going to change this one here to mobile so you can see here it says Enable mobile multi view and configure Android packaging. So we're actually going to do configure Android packaging and we're going to enable multi view. And you can see it's saying about the light, but it also requires an edit to restart. But same as before, we're going to leave this for now because we're going to change some more settings as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back up and we're going to find rendering. So at this point, this is more quality of life content. So just speed things up a little bit and get what we've got. I'm going to change mobile MSA 82 because we don't need it to be too bad. And I'm going to change it to legacy shading model. So that's doing it as well. <laughs> We're going to keep going and we'll go from there. So if we scroll down, if you do an arc base, you've got to remember that the Quest is quite a low performance platform. Or if you're doing games as well, the reflections are quite sparse and you need to use them efficiently. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drop down the reflection capture resolution by half. So set it to 64. 
that way it'll just reduce some of the file sizes that we get when we build a project. Um, forward shading, we're also going to enable this. What this will do is allow us to use MSAA as a shader model with the editor. So you can see here it gives you a little explanation. And then it also disables some options in the material editors. So they're not so performance heavy and they won't be they won't take as long to generate. So we're going to use that and it's still asking us to restart, we're going to keep going. Um so lightning. I haven't tried it personally, so I'm gonna but I'm gonna try it because I know Epic Games used mesh distance fields on Fortnite to do some of the shading for their mobile platform. So I'm gonna enable mesh distance fields and we're gonna set it to 8 bit mesh 8 bit mesh distance fields as well. You can also compress mesh distance fields. So once you're in a level, it's already loaded, but this doesn't work well with stream levels in the game. So if you are doing level streaming, I'd recommend leave this off if it's something that works. But what I'll do is I'll test this all out properly and I'll come back with another video later on showing how to use it and how we can set it all up to get some nice lighting. I haven't tried like propagation volumes, so I'm going to leave that. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we're going to keep going. So you can see here it's actually disabled most of the content for the post processing because we're in um, mobile, we've selected mobile. But what I'm going to do next is for the viewport, you can see we've got some really bad anti aliasing since we're not actually using any. Um, and we're not actually using an anti aliasing method. But since we enable forward rendering, we can actually get away with using MSAA. So if you keep that on the line, and once it's restarted, these will update. So I'm just going to go through some more, see what there is. You see, we've got mobile multi view enabled, mobile multi view direct enabled. So that's pretty much it for, for here. Um, what we're going to do now is scroll down again and we're going to go to Android. So I'll bring this back over. Scroll up. Uh, what I like to do is to try and get a bit more performance out of it is actually change it to Armour 64. And then from there, we can actually support Vulkan, which is just a bit quicker as well. So, as well as an optimization and build, improved build times, this is just how to optimize Unreal and the Quest. So, out of all that, I believe that's everything. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that I might have missed. I'm sure there's something though. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart the editor now. And then once it loads back up, we can build a project. Cool. So you can see here, it says fail to load Steam VR, Steam VR Chaperone component. This is basically because we disabled the Steam plugin and we've got our main character is using it. I'm going to close these windows and I'm going to select our character. I'm going to go to browse to assets just so we can find it a bit quicker and then go to the motion controller. In here, you'll see that we've got compile errors. And it's given us a warning down here for the compiler result. If you don't see this window, you can actually go to Windows or Window on the top and then select Compiler Result. That'll show you this window. And then we can just select on Get Steam VR. So you can see it's a function which runs the setup room scale outline for the Steam VR if you're using the HTC Vive or Index, for example. But because we're not using it and we're just developing some quests, we can hold Alt and click on the line. We can actually disconnect that and then hit compile. That will still show this has been an error, but it's worth keeping all of this here just in case you do want to bring that Steam VR back in. So we hit save, close, and now we're good to go. Okay, so what we need to do now is go to file, package project, portal platforms. This is a new project from the last one that I used, so I need to enable Android so we can build to it. And then from there, we're just going to go to package project, Android, and use multi. So I'm going to build to a multi project because that's what I did for the first example with the file size. And then I'll show you how we can reduce this a little bit more as well. Okay, so I've completed the build. 
I'm going to leave a note at the beginning and I'm going to say don't build it because it took forever and there's really no reason for you guys to do this. So I'm going to show you a step to reduce it even more. But what we can do is actually open the file now, go to desktop build. You see we've got the original one, which I created. So probably 228 megabytes. Whereas the optimized one, if we check that now, is actually 189. So we've managed to reduce it by 30, 40, 40 megabytes, about. So that alone shows that it's it, we've been we've done pretty well with reducing the size. But you may have noticed the build time if you did follow that step anyway is that the build time was stupidly long. And this is because it's building from multiple platforms all at the same time. But what we can actually do is go to Android and then just choose ASTC because that's the only, because that platform works for the Oculus Quest. And that's what we're going to build for. If you're going to build to different headsets, you may need to use the multi because I'm not too sure on some of the others. But I know for the Quest, the ASTC works pretty well. So all I'm going to do now is hit build. We're going to do new folder. Nope. New folder, ASTC, just so we know which is which. Select that and then we'll hit build. Excellent, so that was <laughs> way, way quicker. So we can close that and if we go back to the folder, we'll go here, ASTC. Then just right click the properties and see that one's now 150 megabytes down from the originally optimized one of 189. So we managed to cut it down three, we're maxing the best, so it's about 300 meg. We've reduced it one hell of a, uh, quite a bit to be fair, but you'll know that because of the way I did this your package is now actually stored on your PC rather than your headset but to do to upload the project all you got to do is with your headset connected to your PC and as long as you follow the other steps is open the launch menu often people are tempted to just hit quest on here I really don't recommend doing that it takes a while so what I'll do is go to project launcher and then launch from here so there's a catch in this actually, where once you've got the quest and it's displayed here, it's tempting to just hit launch. But what that does is when it launches, it creates a, a cook process or a server essentially, which Unreal Engine and the application tries to load before it loads the project. So if you were to launch this and build it to a headset, when you load the file through the headset, it can take about 25 to 30 seconds to just load the project, which is an insane, insane amount of time when you're trying to build something. But what you can actually do is go to advanced and change on the fly by, by the book. What this does is it removes that cook process and the server within it. So when you hit launch, it'll build through and it'll give you some information on what's going on. And it'll actually give you a time showing what it is. So I believe the first build might take a little while because it needs to compile some stuff. But after this, I find it's actually relatively easy to just hit build and then buy the book with this to the headset just to test it. What we're waiting for is for when it gets launching on Android, ASTC. So we're just waiting for that to get to that point. You can see here it also gives you a time of duration, so you actually know how long it's taken for you to build a project. Excellent. So it took about a minute to deploy content to the headset, and it says launching on Android now. So you can you can pick up the headset and then put it on, see what's there. And once you're in it, you now so if you put the headset on, you should be able to see your environment. It'll just look exactly the same as the scene, but it'll be quite nice. And you'll also notice the difference between the teleport lines. If you follow the settings that I've done, it should actually look quite nice and it won't look grainy. So to finish the project build and to have it stay complete, all you need to do is press your Oculus Home button and quit the application. Once you've done that, Unreal will update 
and it'll go to the build processes. So that's pretty much it. That's how you get a project, a, a default project from Unreal, optimize and the file size down to then build to the headset. So now you can actually close this, hit done. I'm going to close this down and now we can start building. Excellent. So I hope that helped. Excellent. So that's it for now. I'm not sure what the next video is going to be because I've been trying to get up to this point so we can start doing some fun stuff. So I'm going to leave it here. Uh, that should be a great. This should be a great place for you to start building your own stuff and sort of get the hang of it. If there's anything you want to see, leave a comment below. If you've got any questions, leave it there as well. Um, I'll try and get onto it. But if you could well, like and subscribe, then that will be a big help for me, and even possibly share it on some groups. Awesome. Have a good one. Bye.